The first time I went to the Kruger National Park was for work. The for work part is very important to my story. I was working at a national research institute as part of a core team. And we were approached to come by to the park to investigate the use of technology to aid the then rhino poaching crisis. Please note, we are still in a rhino and wildlife poaching crisis. There is much work to be done. So before we went on our week-long trip, we as a team, we strategized. More people got involved. We came up with a plan. There was discussion points. We wanted to sit down in meetings with the rangers. We wanted to sit down and we came up with fictitious scenarios. And we were using a bunch of technologies in the defense space and we said, oh, we can just take these and it'll apply here, no problem. The day we got to the park, the day we got to the park, we walked into the operations room, shots fired were being reported from the field. Poacher sightings were being reported from the field. Helicopters were being deployed. I was like, where am I? What is going on? You see, if you want to work with tech in Africa, you have to get out of the lab. You have to get out of the office. You have to get off your ass. And you will learn, as we did, real lessons from the field and from the people firsthand. So there's three things I want to share with you as a result of that trip. The first one is we learned the lessons, and we got to digitize the Kruger National Park. We got to introduce technology that allowed them to use data and information for the first time towards their planning, towards running real-time operations, towards thinking about how they can become proactive towards saving the rhino. I'm very proud to, be a ha to have been part of that project. The second thing that happened was being my first trip to the Kruger National Park, I realized that truly Africa is paradise. I realized there and then that we have so much good here. There's so much worth fighting for. And at a minimum, at a very minimum, we must try, must we not? We must. The third thing that happened is, was unexpected. So on that trip and subsequent trips, I got to engage with rangers, I got to engage with security personnel, with conservationists, with ecologists, with security and ex-military people. But something was different. Something was very different. It was, I couldn't put my finger on it, but it was a raw passion from them. And they coupled it to their purpose. It was not just a job for them. But the unexpected thing was that over time, their passion and purpose became shared with our core team's passion and purpose. It, it became our passion and purpose. It became my passion and purpose. And that was unexpected. So these experiences then led to my example of the standing nation. These experiences eventually led, and that was eight years ago, by the way. So fast forward a little bit to 20 months ago, four crazy people, one of whom I am which, stood up, we resigned from our jobs, we created a startup company from scratch, and our purpose is to build technology that impacts the world. My name is Priyash, co-founder of the Awareness Company, and we tell stories from data, and we're a tech company. So, Let's talk a little bit about tech, and tech in Africa. You see, the biggest thing I realized over time was that if you want to work with tech in Africa, and actually this applies globally, don't start with the tech. 
And I'm an engineer saying, don't start with the tech. It's very hard for me to admit that. You have to start with the problem, with the requirement, with the need, with the context first. You have to ask the right questions. Why do I need this? What's, what's, you know, what, what am I looking for? You see, my observations have been the opposite. We, we jump into a sensor or a gadget, it fails, and then we blame tech. But my other observation is there's two sides to the spectrum. On, on one end, there's been too much tech. There's been too much information. There's overload. We, we're confused. Or we try something and it doesn't work. And on the complete other end, there's too little tech. We, we're afraid. We don't know where to start. How do I bring tech into this? Um, what's the cost? Uh, a lot of you know, traditional approaches. I know, I know there's a balance to this. But when we're dealing with tech, technology, information, and data, we must also remember that there's a strong responsibility to be taken. And especially as us as technologists, even more so. That responsibility is key. But on the other end, I'm very excited. We're living in an information age and a technology age. There is an abundance of tech, cloud, artificial intelligence, internet of things, data analytics, apps, devices, sensors. The trick now is how do we leverage it? How do we leverage it to create value in the African context? That is what we are after. When I was in the Kruger during that first week, we, we had a mobile app back then, eight years ago, and it was quite innovative for that time. And we took it into the park in the first week, and we went into the bush, and um, I was like, yeah, but this thing works with cell phone signal, you know? So, and, and the guys were like, yeah, this is the park, you know, there's no cell phone signal here. So, I mean, you gotta be flexible as well. There's no one foot size all tech solution out there. We had to go back and rework the whole thing and, you know, speak to the people and say, okay, now you need to make it work offline and et cetera, et cetera. You gotta, it's a continuous thing. So, I want to share with you now three use cases and three stories about how I know tech is working in Africa. And the first one is around education. So, there's a company co-founded by teachers. And they wanted to use their skills to spread maths and science lessons to rural schools. But they wanted to do it on a big scale, not one school, one school. They wanted to do it on a big scale. How did they do it? They used technology. And simply put, they used the internet. So daily, they are transmitting maths and science lessons live to over 100 schools daily, simultaneously. It's working. I've seen it. But why I like this use case so much is that very organization realized that if they want to scale, they themselves need to adopt technology. So what do they do? They digitize themselves and they turn their workforce into a smart workforce. They're alleviating admin and they're focusing on the thing that they want to do. They're focusing on their purpose, on delivering quality lessons of maths and science to rural schools. It's working. I want to see this happen to tens of thousands of schools. Just imagine. The second use case is a little more current, a little more local. It's around energy. So globally, the biggest consumer of energy are cities. And within cities are buildings. So what businesses are doing now, they are realizing, sure, we need to be more conscious and aware of our energy utilization. We need to understand our consumption better because of what's going on. They should have been doing this all along. But now, something has drove them into action. We all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, they now are using Enter technology, Internet of Things and data analytics. They are using tech to manage and monitor in real time the energy utilization. They are using tech to monitor all the energy sources. They know now they need to monitor the grid, they need to think about bringing solar into the equation, they need to monitor the backup from generators. And once, you see, once you monitor everything in an organizational structure, you can start to think holistically. 
you can start to think, okay, I understand now my energy consumption. How do I reduce it? How do I optimize? How do I reduce the costs? How do I make everyone in that building aware of our energy consumption so that they can also start to reduce consumption? You see, I'm saying reduce consumption here as an excuse, but no, we have to do our part as well. This is something we can do. Think about it. The third use case is one I'm extremely excited about. And it's using so much of tech. I love it. It's, it's using artificial intelligence, internet of things, mobile technology, data, sensors, devices. It's agriculture. It's farms. Unexpected, hey? I love the unexpected. How is farms using more tech than some of the corporates? I love it. And what, what are they using the tech for, you might ask? It's the same thing. Farms want to increase their yield. Farms want to optimize. Food security is such a critical point for us. So we've got to use tech to help them scale, create, create sustainable farms and businesses that's going to enable food security in the future. And tech can help them get there. I've seen it. It's working. But what's our starting point? How do we all start working with tech? For me, it's about getting on the same page. It's about working towards something that is common. It's about synchronizing. So you know what? I, right here, right now, I'm going to use a piece of technology to try to synchronize all of us right here, right now. So OK, there we go. Boom. There's my tech. Um, it's invisible. You can't see it. It's a little heavy. Um, what is it called? The Internet Box version 1. OK, great. Um, so I'm going to give it some data. And that's going to give all of us some information right now. So I've given it the data. And the information's coming out. And that's going to be in the form of a word. And that word that's coming out now is the word apple. The word is apple. If I say to you right now the word apple, what do you see in your mind? Do you see an iPhone? Do you see Steve Jobs? Do you see an Android phone? Do you see an apple tree? Do you see apple juice? Do you see a crossbow arrow piercing an apple? You see, what happened here now was this tech is not so good. It hasn't really helped us. This is bad tech. You know what? I'm going to throw it out. Please, there's a side lesson here. If you're working with bad tech, do not be afraid to throw it out. It will save you in the future. So OK, I've got an upgrade, new version, the Internet Box version 2. Um, what's this? Powered by Industry 4.0. I'm not sure what that means, but OK, let's run with it. Um, all right, now I'm going to give it the same data that I gave the old piece of tech. And uh, the info is coming through much faster now. And that info is in the form of a phrase, a sentence. So I'm going to give you that information now. And that is a bright pink Apple iPhone XS. A bright pink Apple iPhone XS. Is everyone here, at the very minimum, seeing a pink iPhone in their mind? Yeah? We are synchronized. We have a starting point. We can now start to discuss what apps we want to put on this iPhone. We can at least start. We have our starting point. Now, can you imagine? Imagine for a moment utilizing technology to synchronize towards securing our communities. Imagine using technology to synchronize towards becoming more energy aware. Imagine using technology to synchronize towards saving the rhino. Imagine using tech to synchronize towards helping farmers produce uh, and give us access to high quality food in Africa. Stand up, join me, thank you.